call to order the Public Safety Committee for Rutherford County for Monday, June 17th, 2024. Good to see each and every one of you here this evening. At this time, we'll ask for the approval of minutes from our Vice Chairman. Thank you, Chairman Reed. I've reviewed the minutes from May, finding them all to be in order as revised and move for their approval as mailed. Second. We have a motion and a second for their approval. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion to approve has been approved as well as the minutes. So we'll move on now into public comments. I don't believe we have any. No public comments. Our first up is emergency services, public safety report. Director Chris Clark. Good evening, sir. Chairman, committee. Uh, hopefully before you, you have our report, one of the things that I'd like to point out is we did activate the EOC in the month of May twice due to severe weather. Um, I'd like to add that I believe the last one we had four participants that attended the shelters. Um, also, uh, we assisted heavily into um, and assisted the Sheriff's Department and some other uh, folks into the graduation, high school graduations. Uh, that was a large crowd over a week long. Um, they did a fantastic job and we added and supplemented some technology and some equipment to that. And uh, everybody turned out well. And then last but not least, one of the things that uh, in our communication center that has been going on this summer is we have high school school teachers that are shadowing our dispatchers and they're going to start a class in the high schools to generate uh, uh, hopefully careers out of our high schoolers. So that is well on its way. And uh, we've had several meetings with the teachers and then also attending our 911 um, meetings as well. And that's all I have. Okay, sir, you've seen a copy of the report that he's sent to you. Any questions on the report? Question. Um, Director, I see that one of your th items listed, you talked about an active shooter drill with the school system, so they will be utilizing your services for that for the next school year? Yes, ma'am. Other questions or a motion? Motion to approve. Second. second. Approved and a second. For discussion, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? report has been approved thank you sir mr. mr. chairman yes. director I just want to ask uh, is it going to be all the the high schools or is there a specific pilot school for this program in, I know that there's been several school teachers from all over the county um, and they're going to be um, hopefully they're actually bought dispatch consoles so that they can practice and work with that um, and also adopted APCO which is a um, communication protocol type uh, software that will help them. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Emergency Medical Services. Director Brian Gaither. Good evening. For the month of May, we had uh, 3,547 911 calls, 26 hospital transfers, response time of six minutes and 51 seconds, 172 DOAs for the month, 30 of those went for autopsies, a uh, cost of 75,000, and we're up to 737,500 for the year. Collected 880,000, and then the next page is some in-service and training that we had and some community relation event and other standbys that we did for the month. Commalesa Division did 344 calls, uh, collected $107,986. And then the next few pages are the, the more detailed report. Um, you know, the past, over the past month with what was going on with Ascension, that was, 
you know, it added a little, little more challenge to our crew. Most of our volume was in, in Murfreesboro, so with those be, having to be transported to Smyrna, but crews did a fantastic job. And uh, I mean, response time of six minutes, 51 seconds with them, their total call being cut time ex extended. So they really stepped up for that three week period and handled that well. So, and then that's my report. Question. Mister? Could you clarify what you mean by what was going on with Ascension? I don't think I'm familiar. They had a um, uh, cybersecurity attack. So it kind of shut down a lot of their systems. So they had to revert back to documenting on paper and pencil. It was, and it really slowed their time it took to get a person through the system. But they claim it was the employee that clicked on the email that shut it all down. It very well could have been. Those those hackers are intelligent people. Yeah. Other questions? Move to approve. Motion approved. Commissioner James. Second. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Report Thank has you. been approved. Thank you, sir. Our rescue. Got our fire marshal, Jason Sanders, tonight. Good evening. Um, I am Josh Sanders. I'm your fire marshal. Um, I'm in here for Chief Farley. Uh, before you, you'll have our report for the month of May. Um, in May, we had four structure fires, eight vehicle fires, uh, 37 MVAs with injuries, 51 without, two extrications, and 11 water rescues um, as a result of the severe weather. Next page, you'll see our year to date uh, and those numbers. Uh, today, we were at uh, 23 structure fires, uh, 22 vehicle fires, uh, total of 43 um, outsider brush fires, um, 154 MVAs with injuries, 206 without, um, eight extrications, and 14 water rescues. Uh, the following page, you'll see the year to date for the uh, remaining volunteer departments in the county, followed by uh, the report we give to codes for structures that were damaged by fire. Uh, the next page is our uh, fire marshal's office report for uh, the investigation unit, uh, cases that, that were worked during that time frame. And finally, our uh, unauthorized or legal burn report. I'm happy to answer any questions, but that's all I got. Questions or comments, commissioners? We have a motion to approve. Second. We have a second. I just wanted to get the uh, an idea if you, the uh, the grant for the ladder truck, what the status is so far. Have you heard anything up or down so far? No, sir. We will, when do we expect to hear anything? From I that? will have to check with our grant coordinator to see when the the announcement date is for that. I don't know at this point, but uh, usually you don't you don't hear until you you get a you didn't get it letter kind of thing, and that can be months. You know, you're usually looking at nine or ten months past the um, application deadline for that so it'll more than likely be well into the next fiscal year before we know anything any other discussion all those in favor say aye, aye. those opposed report has been approved sir thank you thank you sheriff's office report Chief Spence, before you begin, let me make a little announcement here. I believe all of you hopefully have known this, but I want to remind you, July 1st is the employee picnic, 1130 to 130. Uh, they're needing a final count as soon as possible. That will really help them make uh, things work better. They need that by the 21st. So if you haven't already sent in your RSVP, uh, all of you should have received an email on that. That's you too, commissioners, for the uh, first ever, I think, employee picnic that's going to be held out of the transfer station. And get more details, look back at that email, but I, I'm just giving you an extra reminder of it. 
as that it's coming up here for us soon. But July 1st. Okay, Chief. Thank you, sir. Our MA population is 998 um, updates on our openings. Communications has seven openings. SROs have six openings. We have um, those will be filled in August. We've got some applicants that's going to start in August. Detention has 38 openings. Patrol has 16 openings. That's my end of my report. A motion to approve, Commissioner Beverly. Second. A second. Mr. McMurray. Other discussion? Question. Yes. Um, I was looking at your report and you at your inmate report, and I noticed that the majority of your inmates have not even been sentenced. Can you speak to that? Um, it's due to the courts, backlog of the courts. So what, what's the comp composition of those? I mean, it's 679 of the 998 that have not even been sentenced. What type of... Uh, crimes i guess did they commit it's a wide range of um, different crimes from misdemeanors to um, serious felons uh -huh. we've got several murder cases in the jail that's not even been to court yet, um, to trial or so forth so it's a court back backlog yeah. do you know the average time that they s stay in there not sentenced no, man, we've got some that's been in there several years waiting to go to trial. Uh -huh. I was just curious, you know, it's budget season, looking at the budget, and I'm like, a lot of our money goes to people that haven't even, uh, you know, for housing, people that haven't even been convicted. So I was just kind of curious. Yes, ma'am. That is the criminal system. That happens quite a lot. That, but you brought up a good, good problem we have that's uh, happening out there, and it's something that, that we wish more and more people realized what, what we have. And it's nationwide. It's not just us. I have a question about yes, what you speak called our explorers. Yes, sir. Um, I've watched some stories and read some stories about other municipalities that are, are trying to get people in to law enforcement. Yes, sir. Because there's a lot that are saying, I can't do this anymore. So do we still have explorers? Yes, we have a, it's called cadet program, and it's the ages from 13 to 20 that they're allowed to participate in the program. And it's been a very successful program that we've had over the years. We've got some that came and worked for us, some working for THP, even the, the FBI that's came through our um, recruit uh, cadet class. Well, I hadn't been around there in a while. I just want to make sure we still have that program. Yes, sir. Because I, I thought that was a phenomenal, very um, instrumental in hiring recruits. So um, we now call it cadets. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments, questions? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? The report has been approved. I believe you have a grant. Or yeah, I got um, three of them, sir. The first one we're requesting to apply for the financial year 24 state criminal aliens assistance program grant. The grant is a no match. This is a reimbursement for undocumented subjects that was incarcerated more than four consecutive days and has been convicted of two misdemeanors and one felony. Questions on the grant? Please, yes. So it's specific for persons that fall under these guidelines is what you're saying? Yes, ma'am. And what do those numbers normally look like? We usually get about forty to $50,000 a year um, off this and this um, formula they use per uh, subject that's locked up. And how many subjects? Around 300 to um, 400. Really? And this, you've had this before? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So define, Chairman. Go ahead. My good. Um, define alien and define undocumented. Is that illegal immigrants? 
they are the ones that are, I don't have the proper paperwork to be here. I'm not saying they're illegal to be here. They just don't have the proper documents. And when they go in the arrest, that's when they qualify for this um, reimbursement. You know, when I think of alien, I think about a guy on a spaceship with, not to criticize you, but with a bald head and big eyes as an alien. E.T. Yeah, E.T. Um, so what's the difference between alien and undocumented? Alien would be the one that's... Um it's not supposed to be here at all. The undocumented ones are the ones that are allowed to be here. They just don't have the proper documents and they've been arrested. So an alien, they're not allowed to be here. What do we do with them? We call- Is ICE involved? Yes, we call ICE and they, they have 10 days to come to get them. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Reading this right, is it? These individuals have to have a combination of two misdemeanors and a felony yes, sir, in order to, to qualify for the reimbursement? To meet this, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> that, that's a heck of a checklist. Yes, sir. And we run the whole population from J July 1st of 23 to June 30th of 24. And the a company that reimburses, they go through everybody to make sure they qualify, meet those re requirements. Move to approve the grant request. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Other questions? Please call the roll. Commissioner Beverly? Yes. Commissioner McMurray? Yes. Commissioner Sharina? Yes. Commissioner James? Yes. Commissioner Rather? Yes. Commissioner Oliver? Aye. Commissioner Reed? Yes. Thank y'all. It passes. Thank you. The, the next request, we're uh, requesting to apply for the Financial Year 24 Bureau of Justice Assistance Grant to seek funding for um, purchase body-worn cameras. These would be issued to detention, transport, courthouse, criminal and civil warrants deputies. This is a three-year grant with a 50% match. If approved, we would apply for $450,000. Quick question. Um, are the school resource officers excluded from this? Or? For right now, we're looking at some research and um, let's see what the qualification, them being in school to video um, juveniles. But we will eventually get body camps for them. Thank you. Are the 50% the, uh, the match, the, is that part of your current budget or is that going to be, will that be added into this year's budget? be added to, to be, sure. I guess we're not looking for your budget plus these grant numbers yes sir. I'm just asking to, to apply and then when we if we get approved then we'll come back and ask for the, the money I, I guess what I'm asking is, is is do we preset the funds for the budget for the potential of this coming because it sounds like this is or unless I'm mistaken is this not a, one that you've done before that you usually get yes sir. the last grant that we got for the body cams is for patrol and um some other agencies, I mean, not divisions. But do we preset your budget to have the funds ready to go, or do we have to pull out of the general fund? Pull out of the general fund. In? This one just came up a couple weeks ago, and we already was in the budget process. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Move to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Well, discussion. I did have a question before he made the motion. Um, just a follow-up to Commissioner uh, James. So if the funds are not, I guess, readily available as a part of your budget, do you have like a fund balance that could possibly cover some of it or you would be asking for all of it? Yes, we, we, yes, ma'am, we'd have to look at our budget and see, and if not, um, we would request an unsigned fund balance. Okay, all right, thank you. Chairman, I have a comment. I'd rather have the cameras than to not have them um, because lawsuits are a lot more money than a camera. So if, you know, it's 50% match, we don't know what we're getting. We'll allocate it when we get it. But, you know, it's a lesser two evils, I guess, 
it's better to get 50% of something than 100% of nothing. That's my comment. I, I would agree with that. I was just more along the line of the, the thought process of thinking if we know some of these costs are coming or potentially coming in this next fiscal year, if we had a, like a line item preset with the money already set for it so um, they're ready to go, we already have the money allocated. Other well, discussion? Please call the roll. Commissioner Beverly? Yes. Commissioner Murray? Yes. Commissioner Serena? Yes. Commissioner James? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Oliver? Aye. Chairman Reed? Yes. Thank you. That's approved. Um, last one, uh, we were requesting to apply for the State of Tennessee Statewide School Resource Officer Grant. This is a no matching grant for one year. The grant pays 75000 per school. We're applying for $3,750,000. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve and a second. Further discussion? I, another question. I didn't have, I didn't do my math, but does this cover all schools? Y yes, ma'am. This would count it's 50 cover schools. all of our all it, 50 schools. If they have a state number, yes, ma'am. That's what I was trying to find out. Thank you. You're welcome. Please call the roll. Commissioner Beverly? Yes. Commissioner Murray? Yes. Commissioner Sharina? Yes. Commissioner James? Yes. Commissioner Rather? Yes. Commissioner Oliver? Aye. Commissioner Chairman Reed? Yes. Thank y'all. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you, sir. Um, real quick, I just want to say I appreciate your department for what you all did and EM, EMS during the graduations. Um, we got a lot of um, feedback regarding the protection and the security. Um, so I just want to say openly and say we thank you for what you all did over at EMTSU during those what, 12 to 14 graduations. So we yes, appreciate sir. it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Halls. Michael Gregory. Good evening. For the month of May, we had 439 animals come into the shelter. We had a euthanasia rate of 6.8%. Live release rate for our dogs was 90.2%. Cats were 93.3%. And overall, when wildlife were included, was 91%. Uh, we had nearly 200 animals that came in through our free spay and neuter programs. Our officers completed out 1,285 calls, and they traveled 9,438 miles. Fiscal year to date, 4,347 animals into the shelter, a euthanasia rate of 5.5%. Our live release was 92 and a half percent. Officers have completed almost 13,000 calls, traveling 92,772 miles. For our rabies exposure and bite report, we had 40 bites reported. Two of those were sent for testing, none came back positive. We had 12 other exposures. One of those was tested, it did come back positive. That was the uh, bison that I spoke to you all about last month. Uh, there was a uh, follow up on that to state that it was a skunk variant uh, rabies, which is what was suspected. And then the last page of the report is just the graph that I give you all visually uh, to see the outcomes in live release. That's my report, sir. You've heard the report. Questions or comments or motion? Motion to approve. To approve. Second. And a second for the comments. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? The report has been approved. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Thank you, sir. Recovery court. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm OSHA. For some reason, I'd already marked you off, Ms. Dealing. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, Ed Elam, Director of Insurance and Risk Management. So in your report that you have in front of you, the incident frequency for May 2024 was 21. Uh, incident frequency for calendar year is 108. Uh, total recordables was 82. Lost day claims was 18. Restricted day claims, 53. Other recordables, 11. On the job injury claims, 2022 was 75. 2023 was 113. 2024 was 108. 
And then on the uh, on the job injury incurred dollars for 2022 is 268, 2023 was 417, 2024 667, 667,000. So anticipation, before I move on to the next page, anticipation, when I looked at this report and putting the numbers together, I, I questioned why we have such an increase in incurred dollars and how we came, we went up 2022, part of the COVID year, 2023 was 417, and then what's the big jump in 2024? So if you'll bear with me for just a minute, I'd like to explain that increase in the incurred dollars. For, uh, if you look at the claims, in 2022 you had 75, 23, you had 113, 24, you had 118. So we're down five claims, yet our incurred dollars is up. So then I looked into it a little bit further and say, under the previous TPA's formula, which was Collins and Company, they had a different formula, and if I went back to what their formula was, our incurred dollars would be $432. $432,000. When you look at CCMSI's, their incurred dollars, they have a different formula. It's more conservative. They build more into uh, lost wages and indemnity benefits. And then part of that increase also you have for inflation, but not enough to account for the difference in 23 and 24. So then when you look at incurred dollars, uh, when you look at a TPA that estimates incurred dollars, a lot of them is, is what they just based on average claim and what it is. So I go back to in the incurred dollars is six for these claims is uh, six hundred sixty-seven thousand dollars, and that's what's estimated the payout to be. So far, claims paid to date for just these uh, for this year is one hundred seventy-five thousand. So that makes a little more sense when you start looking at the number of claims we've had this year compared to last year, and the incurred dollars is, is out of line. So then I look at the the uh, uh, next thing is lost wages estimated with CCMSI, and their lost wages estimated for these claims is $402,000. The loss paid up to date for these lost wages indemnity payments is $116,000. So when you go back and look at their approach and their formula, you see that there's more money built into it. Yet, when, when you look at Rutherford County and you look at our lost wages, um, you see 116. One of the things I will point out to you is if that's their average book of business, what these costs of these claims are, I will brag on my team for just a minute and say this is, this is what communication with employees and, and getting back to them, getting back to work sooner, finding what we can with um, lost state claims. So in the, when I looked at the contributing factors, Jane Corbin and Susan Thompson both in the office monitor the employees' uh, claims and continue to follow their progress throughout. Uh, when there's a request for approval for referrals and testing as ordered by treating physicians, one of these things that affects that lost day wages is how quickly you get that referral process, how quickly you get that testing ordered. And so I go back up to what they're estimating and what we're actually paying out. I contribute that to the to Jane Corbin and Susan Thompson in the office in keeping those claims better than average. So then I looked back and I said, uh, with those contributing factors, um, and, and, and Jane and Susan meet with Rutherford County Schools, we meet with our government officials, we meet with our department heads in communicating how we can get that employee back to work. And I wanna, I wanna give a good shout out to the employees. Most of your employees want, to, just about all of them wanna come back to work as soon as possible. So they're very appreciative that you get them, you get the care that they need and you get them back to the, to the work and back into that routine that they so desperately wanna come back to work. So that's what uh, Jane and them work with the treating physicians and get those things ordered. Um, and get them back to work as soon as possible and trying to find, they've really concentrated, especially in the last year or two, on uh, return to work with restrictions. What have you got? It may not be their, their it, it's within their job description, but what have you got that's out of the ordinary than what they normally do? But it's in their job description where they can do the work. 
So that's where I think you see a big difference in what incurred dollars are and what the actual expenses are um, for us. I mean, being better than average. So then the next thing I did, um, I looked at our incident rate because that's another thing as Commissioner Phillips brings up several times, what is the incident rate? Because that also tells the story. So I looked at our incident rate to see if it matched up with what we were talking about with our incurred dollars and, and also what our uh, injuries are. And when I looked at the, the uh, total recordable injury, in, injuries hours, it is a formula that the uh, OSHA puts together is total recordable injuries times hours worked divided by 200,000. So Rutherford County's rate in 2023 was 2.55. We have estimated, and it's just an estimate because it all is based on a year, we have estimated our rate to be about 2.83. So there is a little bit of an increase. The state rate, keep in mind, we're comparing ourselves to ourselves. The state rate is at 4.6 for 2022. And I'm giving you this information today, the state will not give us 2023 rates until about October or November. And we keep asking, um, in, in about October, November, we'll start asking for it. So um, anyway, just to give you a little bit of a breakdown, um, you know, for us if, in working with the employees and working with the doctors and working with the officials, um, you know, it's a win-win for the county and it's a win-win for the employees. So that number will continue to stay inflated because it's we're not comparing apples to apples in the incurred dollars. Um, and I like to go back and at least the numbers are different, but what does the numbers tell us? And and if they're not apples to apples, how do we get them there? So that's, that's what I've looked at in the report. Um, and if you go back to the month of April on the incurred dollars, you see that there's a big spike. So when I said, you know, we're looking at approximately five month estimate at 2.83, if we do like we did the rest of the year, because there's a spike, that number will come down. So you have to be careful anytime you look at OJI claims and you compare one month or you look at a quarter, you really need to look at over a period of time because it's not a level uh, um, occurrence. You have good months and you'll have some bad months. So uh, I will say for the month of June and July, that's it's mostly because schools are out. So that's why you have a dip there. So, and uh, to move on from there, you have cause of injuries. Uh, Board of Education had 10, County General had 11, Highway had zero, and with the County General, two EMS, one Fire and Rescue, uh, one JDC, one Pauls, and six with the Sheriff's Office. Uh, and just to touch a little bit without going into great detail, um, we are seeing a, a few additional uh, injuries from new hires and training. And um, uh, Commissioner Beverly can probably account to this when you're in training, firefighter, police training, all those things. It's pretty rigorous. It's not something, you know, so you, you might see some additional um, claims due to new hires from that. So, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Good report. Questions? Yes, please. Commissioner Oliver? Thank you for that comprehensive report. You checked off some of my questions as you were talking, so I appreciate that. I hope it wasn't um, too long. <laughs> <laughs> no, not too long at all. Um, what precipitated the formula change? Did we decide to change companies or? Yeah, yes, we bid it out. We changed our TPA, our third party administrator. We changed them and it's just a difference in, in how they estimate a claim. Uh, and, you know, different TPAs, if you said I've got a back injury, somebody may put $4,000 on it and get them back and somebody might put 10 and somebody might put 50 because they think, oh, I may have surgery. So they throw a big number on it. Uh, I do know what what I've, in some research here, I have noticed that, um, you know, with our new TPA, CCMSI, they put more into the indemnity uh, for lost wages to make sure that in that estimate of that claim that it's, they have enough money in there. Okay. Um, the other question is, can we get the actual um, as a part of our report moving forward, or is, is that something that can't be done? I know you explained the actual, but just to have a graphic with the actual versus the incurred, is that a possibility? 
I, I worked on this for a couple of days trying to put all this together. Yeah. I mean, I, um, I can work on tweaking that report a little bit because what we have discussed this month is, is it looks like our incurred dollars are going to continue to separate more and more due to the comparison. Mm -hmm. Of course, our third party administrator took over in July, so as we get closer to the end of the year, we're hoping that that number will shrink back down. Thank you. Other questions or comments or motions? Move to approve. Motion to approve, Commissioner James. Second. Second, Commissioner Serino, further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, the report has been approved. Thank you, have a good evening. I promise not to overlook you next time. <laughs> All right, recovery court. Dale Ricks. Good evening. Um, the recovery court report for the month of May, we had a total of 186 participants. Eight were new and four um, completed one of our courts. In our DUI program, we currently have 33 people in our day program and 34 in our night. Drug court has 49, mental health court has 59, and our veterans court currently sits at 16. We have a total of 94 applications somewhere in the application process. And that concludes my report. All right, questions on the recovery court report. Hey, how long is your application process? How long does it take? It just depends on um, how long it takes for us to get the DA to approve us to actually assess the participant. So it can be anywhere from two weeks to six weeks. It just depends on how long that part takes. We have 94, yes ma'am. Motion to approve. Motion second. to approve. And a second. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed? The report has been approved. And I believe we have our probation report. Ms. Smith? We have a grant with recovery court as well. You have, okay. okay. Lindsay Davis, I'm the reentry program coordinator underneath Recovery Courts. You should have this in front of you. We're requesting permission to apply for a BJA grant for smart reentry housing demonstration program. The anticipated budget would be up to $1 million with a 50% cash or in kind match over a three year period. We will explore partnerships with various nonprofit organizations that provide transitional housing and wraparound services to be the subrecipient. And we will explore different avenues for the funding match as well. <clears throat> Questions on the grant? Motion to approve. Motion to approve. I have a second. 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 I believe we have this question. I had a question. I was just wondering how many uh, in this three year grant time frame do you expect it to potentially help? With the housing, it really right now we're in the early stages. It depends on the housing and how many people can be put into the housing. We would hope to support up to 100 individuals with this grant, though, if that answers your question. Other questions? Call the roll. Commissioner Beverly? Yes. Commissioner McMurray? Yes. Commissioner Sharina? Yes. Commissioner James? Yes. Commissioner Rather? Yes. Commissioner Oliver? Aye. Chairman Reed? Yes. Motion is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all have a good evening. Okay. Probation report. Good evening. I believe you're filling in tonight too, aren't you? Okay. Good evening. My name is Tierra Smith. I'm the Assistant Director of Probation. For the month of May, we closed out a total of 273 cases, which was 242 clients. We actively supervised a total of 1,377 people. 
In our various classes and programs, we had a total of 73 clients during the month. 18 successfully completed th their programs and 13 were discharged unsuccessfully. With our Olive Branch clothing and food, we were able to help a total of four clients with either food or, and or clothing assistance. We did receive one donation of individual stack items during the month. Within the Tim Rocks program in the General Sessions Court, we had a total of 20 participants. There are three currently pending a court date to be accepted into the program. There were no graduations for, for May, and one client was discharged unsuccessfully. During the month of May, we sent $9,132 to the clerk's office to be collected as part of a payment agreement. The fiscal year total that has been sent for collections is $169,677.50. Also for the month, there was $3,942 that we were unable to send for collections, bringing that fiscal year total to $54,638.50. We did supervise a total of 10 clients that the court has previously deemed indigent, and that would be my report for May. Okay, good report. Any questions, comments? Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second, Second Commissioner Oliver. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Report has been approved. Thank you. Correction Work Center report. Superintendent Cope. Good evening, sir. Good evening. First in your packet, you'll notice our meetings, meeting minutes from uh, June 3rd meeting with our board. Next is gonna be the work release program statistics, and that uh, program continues to uh, work very well. Next is the May 2024 total trash collected, uh, County Roads County trash collected 10,876 pounds, and state routes we collected 787 bags. Next is the 2024 worker report, and you will see that uh, there's a $71,512 uh, total combined saving using uh, resident labor. And last is your CQI or medical statistics, and that is my report. Okay, questions, comments, or motions? Question, please. I was noticing in your minutes from your meeting, um, you're training your inmates on how to administer Narcan. We are. Can you talk to me a little bit more about that? Well, um, I, I mean, it, it's kind of self-explanatory, but everybody is gonna be trained, whether it's our staff and or residents on the use of Narcan just for safety reasons and will also be uh, placed in a, uh, a can of Narcan in each person's property, so as they re release, they'll be able to take that with them. So the training is while they're incarcerated, but they get the Narcan once they're released. Is that what you're saying? That is correct. Okay, I was a little confused by that. Thank you. You're welcome. Chairman. Yes. I've read reports, heard reports, where nowadays Narcan sometimes doesn't work because the drug's different, they, they, you know, do things different. Have we experienced that in Rutherford County? We have within the county, but not within the facility. Uh, but you're always going to administer Narcan first, regardless, uh, there's, there's no way to tell what, uh, uh, substance has been taken, so you always administer Narcan first. I have a motion to approve. And a second. Mr. Chairman, uh, Superintendent, yes. who, who does that training? 
Uh, it is uh, Will that works with us, uh, you know who I'm talking about, <laughs> that works with us with the uh, uh, opioid board. All right, we already have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you all. Yes, sir. Juvenile attention. This evening, I think we have Captain Caesar in tonight. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Um, <clears throat> before you, you have our report for the month of May. Um, in front of you, you will have the board minutes for the juvenile detention center board. You'll also have the st STD statistics. Um, you also have the facility programming, which includes education services, our chaplain services, and our volunteers that provide their services as well. And then you'll have our yearly activity report. <clears throat> if you have any questions, I'll gladly answer any of them. Questions or comments on the report? Motion to approve. Motion to approve. And a second. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? The report has been approved, sir. Thank you. Have a good maybe evening. You'll, maybe you'll get a vacation this next time. Believe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Commissioners, we may see tonight we haven't had as many uh, budget amendments and this sort of thing. Reason being, we're at the end of the month. And uh, there's not that uh, much in the budget to swap back and forth. So uh, we'll have to wait till the next, after we get through with our budget and all this sort of thing. Any other business at this time? I'm gonna stand for this one. Uh, you keep sitting? <laughs> no, everybody can sit. Uh, Chairman Phillips came up with these shout outs, uh, which I, that is so needed. So I want to shout out to the University of Tennessee baseball team. They will play Wednesday night. They've already defeated North Carolina and Florida State, and they will play Wednesday night the winner of North Carolina and Florida State. And I, if y'all have been watching these ball games, they are phenomenal. Tennessee has done so well. There's such talent and strength on that team. I, it's unbelievable. So I give a shout out to UT Baseball being in the College World Series. Sir, the only reason they won the night against Florida State is because our chaplain prayed for them. You'll remember. I did include, I did include them in the prayer. <laughs> Well, then I have one more shout out to our chaplain who actually won that game for UT, so thank you. I'll, you know, I'll go up there, I'll take, take a donation for a GoFundMe to, to fly up to Omaha and to watch him play. <laughs> that night when I was watching that game, I said, he's taking an awful big chance right there if they don't win. <laughs> Anything else? If not, we are adjourned.